Within all my Apple devices, the one that took me the longest to try was the Mac Studio. At first it was because the idea of having a MacBook as my do-it-all device that could also be portable was a more compelling idea and then I wasn't sure if I really wanted to commit to the desktop life. However, during the last couple of years, the MacBook became a desktop to me. Always in clamshell mode and rarely going outside of the house, so here I am with an M3 Ultra Mac Studio and with many reasons to recommend the desktop form factor to anyone. So let's talk about it. The first thing that comes to mind is that you can get so much more value with a Mac Studio. For example, if you want to buy a MacBook Pro with the M4 Max right now, the base price for a 14 inch is around $3,200. If you buy the same spec for the Mac Studio, you save a little bit over $1,000 of difference. So even though you get 512 with the Mac Studio in this case, it's a much more value for your money because the reality is that you don't really need to have so much internal storage if you have a desktop you can always have an ssd connected to it at all time offloading all of your heavy work directly to your desktop and the benefit of that is that you can also take that ssd and pass it across different devices or share your work with somebody else and obviously all those savings make a lot of sense if you already have a keyboard or a monitor but even though if you don't have them, you can still save money. If you buy a cheaper alternative, you don't really have to buy a studio display to make this setup work. There's a lot of options out there that have also incredible image quality that will match incredibly well with your Mac Studio. And for keyboards, you have multiple options as well. You can get a mechanical keyboard from your favorite company, or you can get a simpler keyboard like the one that I have from Logitech. But if you want to keep, you know, that Apple-like feel and you want to retain that fingerprint functionality, you can always get an authentic keyboard from Apple, which is not too expensive is also an option if you want to keep that but I personally love the Logitech version a lot and even though I've been switching keyboards and different options here and there I usually go back to this one. Let's talk now about port availability. My MacBook Pro comes with three USB-C ports that for the most part do the job, but there's many times additional ports would have made my life a lot easier, especially when using clamshell mode. So in my M3 Max MacBook Pro, I have three USB Type-C ports, which they are Thunderbolt 4, but my Mac Studio has six and they're Thunderbolt 5, which means much faster data transfer, but that obviously is not a fair comparison. So let's compare this with the M4 Max base MacBook Pro and the M4 Max base Mac Studio. So same scenario, you have three Thunderbolt 5, on your MacBook Pro. In the Mac Studio, you have four Thunderbolt 5 ports and also on the front, you have two with more options for Ethernet port, USB Type-A, which gives you a little bit more options when it comes to connecting peripherals to your setup and also a cleaner look since you don't really have to have a docking station, which I really enjoy. Right now, my desk setup looks extremely clean and it's something that I got used to after switching to the Mac Studio from my MacBook Pro and I really like living without a docking station. At least as much as I can. If obviously if I have to use one when I'm traveling, even if it's a small one, I'm okay with it. But for my main workspace, I like to have it as clean as possible as it always inspires more creativity. And obviously I can keep everything clean and organized without a proper desk. I'm using the E7 Pro from the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot. This one is configured with a solid wood top measuring 63 by 30 inches and I love the look of it. The light color is an awesome contrast to my office but as you can imagine they offer different tops and sizes as well but I do think that for most people the 63 by 30 is the perfect size. This desk can withstand up to 440 pounds making it very sturdy and it gives me the confidence to know that no matter what is on my desk it'll be properly supported even if you don't think you'll get near that load capacity all that transfers into better desk stability plus our semi c leg structure made with automotive grade seal as to the equation but adding the column closer to the back it supports the heavier parts of your desk better and even at my standing position when applying some force the desk remains very stable on that note the controller is very easy to operate everything is touch sensitive and it has four memory slots for your desired height although i only use two but the other settings come in handy if you share your desk with somebody else or in my case they can be useful while filming as well I have a lot of tech on my desk and if you look under, cables are nowhere to be seen because FlexiSpot makes it easy with their included cable tray. I will say that it's a little bit narrow but I made it work well with my setup. Anyways guys, if you would like to try the E7 Pro standing desk, check the link in the description but now let's go back to the video. On that note, the Mac Studio looks great. This aluminum cube is definitely a great look to any desk. It has a much serious tone than a MacBook Pro and it's so easy to conceal, keeping everything organized, especially if you have a monitor riser. I had one on my different setup, but I can really use it here because it has a different wood color, but I have plans to get one as soon as I can to add that touch that elevates your desk setup a little bit more. If your monitor is not high adjustable like mine, a monitor riser is a must have and I highly recommend it to anybody. But yeah, going back to the topic, the Mac Studio is a beautiful 
beautiful piece of engineering that not only made my work as smooth as it can be, but it also enhances the look of my studio and aesthetics also matter. Working in a place that you love inspires more creativity and it makes you want to work more. Now the Mac Studio is significantly better than the MacBook Pro when it comes to thermal efficiency due to its size and the desktop form factor, which allows for a more robust cooling system. All of this meaning that it has a bigger heat sink for better heat dissipation, larger fans for a more effective cooling, even during heavier workloads. I haven't heard them once as the M3 Ultra never goes close to being warm, so the fans go barely under any major stress, making them operate very quietly. And more importantly, it has an optimized airflow that it would have been much more complicated to implement on a thinner and portable design as the MacBook Pro. Saying this, it's the perfect device for professionals that have a dedicated space to work and aren't subject to traveling a lot. And lastly, the last reason that for me makes having a Mac Studio such a great device is that let's say you go for the $2,000 version, right? You save a lot of money in storage and you have an incredible powerful machine. But the only thing that you're lacking if you don't have SSDs with you and you like to have anything internal is storage. Well, there's a company called Polisoft and they sell direct replacement for your internal SSDs and it looks surprisingly easy to do. I'll link the video in the description that goes over the process, but you get an SSD upgrade at a fraction of the price. Let's say you want to max out your Mac Studio in storage well, that will cost you $2,400. And I honestly don't recommend that to anybody. Even if you want to max out your Mac Studio, it's better for you to max out everything else that is more usable and buy cheaper storage somewhere else. But this company makes that option a little bit more attractive for most people. So instead of paying $2,400, that option will cost you only $1,000. And if that is too much for you, they sell a version for $427 and they give you two terabytes of storage, which is an incredible upgrade if you ask me. Now, all of this is fairly new. And even though tests are showing incredible performance in transfer speeds and proving to be reliable, it's always in the back of my mind that this could be something Apple can patch in the future. And all of that is hard to tell, but I'm personally considering this option from my Mac Studio and go all the way to eight terabytes. However, I'm waiting a little bit because I want to make sure that it's still a viable option for my Mac Studio and I don't get something that could get patched later on and it's getting a lot more popular so I may give it a shot but as I said before make sure you do your research before deciding to do the same and yeah you guys have seen that there's a lot of benefits of having one or the other but I personally find myself enjoying both the Mac Studio for serious work at the office without putting any limits to my creativity and the entry Max for serious work as well but with some limitation here and there that I'm okay with although it's still an incredible powerhouse to work when I'm away from home or simply when I want to step away to change my environment and work at the kitchen or the living room therefore having both just work for me but only you know the type of user you are and which of the two machines fits your lifestyle the best but if I could only choose one, it'll be the MacBook Pro for the flexibility. But the reality is that the real value is within Mac Studio. As always, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care. Bye.